Avalanche Canada has finally released the information on what happened with that fatal heli skiing accident. It involved 10 people down by Invermere in the Purcell Mountains. They may have been waiting because of number of people involved, liabilities. Uh, some of the people were from Germany, three of them from the same town in Bavaria. Uh, people were critically injured. Uh, maybe it wasn't known how many were going to survive for a while. Anyways, that's all here or there. The report, the incident summary is on Avalanche Canada's site now and we can look at it. It happened at this place called Copper Crown Mountain, which is about 30 kilometers southwest of Invermere, British Columbia. The elevation at the top of the mountain is about 2,500 meters. It's called mechanized skiing. That means heli skiing. Ten people were involved, four injuries, and three fatalities. group of nine heli skiers and one guide was skiing in the Copper Crown region in the southeast corner of the tenure on a run called Too Bad About the Skiing. The guide was regrouping higher up on the run when the fifth person in the group triggered a settlement at the regroup which initiated the avalanche above. The entire group was swept into the sparse forested area next to the avalanche path. Two guests were fully buried and were pronounced dead on the scene. Three other guests were partially buried and sustained critical injuries and one guest sustained non-critical injuries. The guide was also partially buried and sustained critical injuries. All injured parties were airlifted to the Invermere Hospital. One of the critically injured guests succumbed to his injuries at the hospital and he did not survive. It was a size 3 avalanche and size 3 avalanches are powerful enough to break uh, trees in half, smash buildings. This is a powerful, powerful, powerful avalanche and it was 300 meters wide. 75 centimeters thickness was the slab and it's that persistent slab that Avalanche Canada has been really warning everybody about and is again going to be the problem with this new snowfall. On Thursday March 6 already Avalanche Canada was saying in a report authored by Mike Conlan who's an Avalanche forecaster there and his predictions in this blog will come, pat, uh, will come true now with the heavy snow resuming in southern British Columbia. This, this year's avalanche season has been plagued by a deeply buried weak layer across much of the western Canada mountain ranges, making it one of the most difficult snowpacks to safely manage in decades. The layer of concern formed in November. It's buried near the base of the snowpack, which means it varies from over one meter deep in the Rockies to three meters deep in the Columbia and Coast Mountains. This weak layer has caused many high consequence avalanches since its formation and has already claimed 12 lives. It exists in features like steep terrain where the snowpack is shallow, rocky start zones in the alpine, wind affected terrain near ridge crests, areas where the snowpack transitions from thick, uh, thin to thick. We've seen many large avalanches on reloaded bed surfaces. This means that slopes previously avalanched this season they have the capacity to produce more large avalanches when reloaded with brand new snow. It's important because it tells us that this weak buried layer can survive multiple avalanche cycles. It means that knowing that a slope already had an avalanche on it does not mean the slope is safe. Rapid loading from snow, rain or wind transported snow stresses the snowpack, including this deeply buried layer. And now we have more of this in southern BC. These conditions also increase the likelihood of smaller avalanches releasing, which could step down to the deep weak layer and cause very large destructive avalanches. We saw many very large avalanches, size 3 to 4, release in the past few weeks under stormy conditions, and we expect that trend to continue for the remainder of the season. Warm air temperatures and sunny skies also modify the snowpack. Warming affects the snowpack by reducing its strength and increasing stress on buried layers. Warming also affects how deep a human stress reaches into the snowpack. We have warming now happening again. When human stresses reach buried weak layers, they can trigger avalanches. The influence of warming is greatest where the snowpack is inherently thin. And this is also where stresses from a human are most likely to trigger this layer. Warming also causes cornices to weaken and release, which could provide the large load needed to trigger the deep weak layer. Regardless of the trigger type, we expect to see many consequential avalanches releasing on the buried weak layer as we transition into spring conditions. One could argue we're transitioning into spring conditions this week.
Says Mike Conlon, we must acknowledge this snowpack exists and we can't change that. What we can change is how we manage the terrain to limit the likelihood of being caught in a high consequence avalanche. This means understanding where you stand with respect to avalanche terrain and being disciplined with any terrain choices. Experienced riders are making a point of avoiding consequential terrain, particularly exposed or rocky alpine start zones where triggering this weak layer is most likely. Your mindset going into the mountains should be that this is not the season for high consequence objectives. Be the critical thinker in the group during any decision. Stay disciplined and have a safe remainder of the avalanche season. But we got a warming clearing trend happening in BC later this week. So that will change conditions once again. But I would suspect that the next three to four days could be pretty bad. And we'll have to revisit that when we get through this storm and the warmth comes back in. That doesn't mean my channel is not important. That doesn't mean you shouldn't support it. Hit thanks, hit like, hit share, hit subscribe, keep coming back. This is what I want to do, make videos for you. Okay, from Wells, British Columbia, good night.